Good morning, everybody. My name is Yoko Sarvi. I'm very glad to see you, many, many of you again, although on online setting, but uh, still it's very pleasant uh, to meet again. Um, and it is a Valentine's day after Valentine's day, so I'm, I trust everybody is in a very good mood following such an important milestone, annual milestone day. We are making a presentation today on teacher quality analysis, TA, together with Ria Palmquist, my teammate. But before we proceed, I'd like to um, invite Yuka Tulivori to say opening remarks. Yuka, over to you. Thank you, Yoko. Uh, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome all to our teacher quality uh, training today. And as we all know, highly qualified and motivated teachers are one of the key char characteristics of a well-working education system. They have a major impact on improving student learning outcomes, which are in danger, especially now with the ongoing and hopefully soon finishing pandemic. On the other hand, one of the key challenges faced by education systems is also how to attract qualified and motivated people into the teaching career. Also, how to develop them into high quality instructors and uh, facilitators and retain and support and incentivize them to improve during their whole career. Most developing countries face major challenges in recruiting the best candidates for this teaching career. ADB has financing this technical assistant project, uh, this project, and the aim is to help strengthen teacher pre-service and in-service education policies and systems of selected developing member countries of ADB. The main purpose of our TA has been how to help identify options on how DMCs can be supported to enhance teacher quality, pre-service and in-service teacher education systems and teacher recruitment, deployment and retention by drawing on best practices, particularly from education systems that have demonstrated progress in this critical area. In this TA, we have been doing uh, uh, these trainings and studies in two of ADP's developing member countries, Uzbekistan and Sri Lanka, and then also uh, in two other countries, Finland and, uh, uh, Finland and Singapore. As a result from these studies that we are also hearing today. Uh, we are expecting to find new ways to support and go, guide our member countries when they develop their teacher pre-service and in-service education, and of course, the education systems in general. As said, today we are having the training for ADP education staff about the studies in Finland and Singapore, but of course, also in Sri Lanka and Uzbekistan. I really hope that you will find this information and recommendations that we are hearing today from our experts as useful as I am. Uh, I also would like to take this opportunity to already thank uh, our consultants from the Finnish consulting group, uh, all the work that they have been done, done and they are still doing for ADB. And I'm also really looking forward to receive the final knowledge product later this month that we will then share with all our DMCs later when we have the product finished. But uh, thank you for your attention and uh, please listen carefully what Ria and Yoko have to say today. Back to you, Yoko. Thank you, Yuka. Um, uh, in this team, we had all together also uh, in that is to, to meet myself and Ria as international me members of the team, consultants in the team. We had also national consultants in Haiti Laini in Finland, Edmund Chow in Singapore, um, Asoka Kardi Hevake in Sri Lanka, and Kamal Chayan Khotyaev in, in Uzbekistan. So many of these studies, what we are presenting today, were made at this, that kind of country specific studies and and uh, that is national consultants were leading those those efforts in the project now we can go to the second slide a bit about the tsda focus um it uh, 
prioritize the teacher education reform in primary and basic education and the mainstream education, meaning for instance, special education was not, this time not teacher education for special uh, education, special needs of children was not included at this point. And we also mainly kept the analysis at the policy and strategy level recommendations and uh, looking for innovative approaches um, in teacher education. Teacher education for secondary education was also touched to a certain extent, especially if there was certain clear implication if, uh, from the reform, proposed reform in primary basic education to teacher education in secondary education. Now we can look at the next slide. Yeah, mobilized. The team was mobilized in the week of uh, 10th May last year, and they were complete in 15th January this year, except there was a, uh, one activity in Sri Lanka, which uh, um, uh, on the request of Sri Lanka government was to take place after the 15th January. Therefore, the TA period was a bit extended. Next slide, please. Before we go to look into its, its component in detail, um, this is an overview of the activities. There was a comprehensive literature review on global teacher education trends and reforms. And then there were these field studies in the four countries, meaning Finland, Singapore, Sri Lanka, and Uzbekistan. And analysis was mainly qualitative, these studies may, may, were mainly qualitative. And in collaboration with the ministries in both countries, uh, Sri Lanka and Uzbekistan, we also delivered the online training program. Drawing on these studies, what, what, what the DA had produced, but also drawing on analysis and a material what these countries were sharing and wanted to also to bring up in these trainings. Next slide, please. Now I give the floor to Ria, who will go take an overview of the outputs and um, and key, uh, highlight key issues arising from each component. Ria, over to you. Thank you, Jouko. And thank you, Jukka, for opening this uh, session. So my name is Ria Palmqvist and uh, I was an uh, education expert in this project and happy belated Valentine's Day from Finland as well. So uh, let's go to the first uh, part of, of the project. So next slide. Uh, we uh, had an excellent academic team in this project, which was, which was a pleasure to work with. We started with an international literature review we decided that we, we need to have a very good uh, basic information, ground information, and also a de detailed information about how uh, we start uh, focusing these uh, pre-service and in-service education systems in our um, uh, target countries. And uh, we also thought that we, we need to have a good uh, picture what's going on in, in, in teacher education, in, in pre-service and in-service education uh, in these areas where we search. Uh, teacher recruitment, a uh, very uh, interesting uh, uh, phenomenon uh, in this project as well. And this pandemic, of course, has been all over with us uh, this uh, the whole time that the project was going on. So therefore we of course had to have uh, uh, this um, uh, kind of plan B because we, we, we of course knew that we weren't able to, 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 to uh, visit these countries. But it, we had excellent uh, local experts uh, and, and they did everything that was in their hands to, to find the information needed for this project. So uh, it's, it, uh, international, international literature review was quite uh, wide. Uh, we, we, we of course had to, had to uh, uh, then even, even shorten it in the end, end by a good information and good 
to ground this object. Next slide. Uh, on basis of this literature review, we came up with these uh, uh, the results. What, because of course we are looking for learning, we're looking for, for teacher education uh, system, we are looking for uh, ways to, to improve the quality of education in these countries. So we thought that uh, what is the most direct and effective way of increasing the quality of education? We also all know that teachers are the, the key issue, the, the, the key characters, the, the key uh, uh, people working in education. So improving initial teacher education and its, its recruitment is something that we found out that in, in all research, that the focus is finding the right people, educating them to become teachers is uh, important. We, we think that anyone can teach, and that's probably true, but if we want someone to teach well and effectively, we need to write the choose, uh, choose the right people. Uh, also, another issue that was very uh, highlighted in, in research is that it's needed to provide continuing education opportunities for in-service teachers to improve their pedagogical knowledge and skills. The world is changing, uh, learning is changing so that we, we know more about how people learn, we know how, how children learn, and, and of course the learning environments are changing. So there's something that we need to give teachers more skills uh, all their career, the initial teacher training can be really good, but they need to also to more and be critical about their own skills so they can they can uh, go on and, and get new skills to become and stay good teachers. Therefore, uh, teacher education should be seen as a lifelong learning process. It's also about the motivation, about the attitude uh, when. Uh, they are uh, studying to become teachers. They also have to learn about uh, what is to be a teacher, in, not only in right now, but in five years, in 10 years, and, and the whole process. Because it's, it's very highlighted in all, all research that this should become a lifelong learning process because the skills that were learned in initial teacher training or are learned today, they might not work in, in 40 years than, than in some countries teachers continue working. So there should be a clear continuum for teachers uh, to update their skills throughout the years. I think conclusion from the literature review that the, the ideas that, that is a good quality education, uh, which includes these uh, themes that were included in our project. Next slide. Uh, after and, and, and after during the, the literature review, we started to do these field studies in Finland and Singapore. These two countries were chosen because of the good results uh, they have uh, in, in international uh, assessments like PISA assessment. Uh, so we thought that these two systems, they have a good quality education, so they must have a good quality teachers as well. So they were chosen to, to be like the, the countries that we wanted to bit more detailed information about what's going on in there. And like I said all, already in the beginning, we had a great team. With it, it was highly academic also from, from both, both countries. It was a a pleasure to work because there was a really wide uh, understanding of the system and the teacher education and also they had very uh, good networks so if there was a question that we needed to answer we, if we found someone who, who uh, was able to give us answers. Uh, we, we, we produced a, a lot, lot of uh, also a uh, com comparison of these two, two systems. And we found uh, some things that were common and we also found that they were very different. Next slide. Because here we, we thought that we, we 
we could uh, can give you and show you uh, what we found. In both countries, the teachers are educated at the university level. And that was something that we found out that if we had a chance, we would like to educate all the teachers all over the world in the university. Of course, we know that's not possible, but it helps because, because a good education, a good a university and high level education can give uh, people skills that, that they are able to, to, to learn more, learn better and have a very wide uh, picture of what they're doing and, and they have a good um, like ideas about what a teacher's career can be like. Um, coordinated practicums. We found, also found out that in these both countries, uh, while teachers uh, are educated, they also have a chance to get a picture what is really like in schools. They have these practicums and they are actually working with experienced teachers in real uh, schools. So they get skills, they get uh, help, they get like uh, 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 reflecting, reflect on what they're doing and they learn the, in the real contexts how to do a teach. And so we thought that support that, that can be uh, ne needed in, in early career teachers, that's where it starts when they get to, to discuss with experienced teachers and solve the, the problems that might occur there in their work. So uh, also in, in these both countries, there are multiple opportunities to create professional development opportunities for teachers. And that's something that we think is must like I already uh, mentioned earlier, that, that, that lifelong process and keeping up with skills and competencies is something that teachers need to do. And that's something that they, of course, uh, need resources from the government and all the, the one, whoever is the, the responsible for the education. And when we talk about uh, in-service training and the new skills, we cannot leave technologies out because, of course, uh, ICT skills and relevant techno technologies are needed uh, in all our life at the moment, and especially uh, in education. This pandemic showed that there is a need, for example, uh, for distance learning skills, and also teachers need to know how to arrange a, a class without having the children present in the same room, for example. So that's something that for especially Singapore uh, had really good uh, ICT, uh, both, both equipment and skills because they already before pandemic had, had some uh, distance uh, lessons from, from the schools. And, and so they've been able to continue this, uh, this all the way. And then um, we also came to this discuss in this discussion about that these systems, even though they are both good, are very different. So we all know that you cannot just transform one system to another country and to another culture, but you have to uh, create uh, your own. And you have to consider the, the culture, the tradition and uh, in, in one place, but there are certain characteristics that you can take with you and start building a good system anywhere. Next slide. Uh, we had these uh, two uh, countries that we worked with, uh, uh, Uzbekistan and Sri Lanka. And in, in these countries, we had very experienced, good uh, experts as well. And, and they, of course, worked in, in very different uh, surroundings there. In both countries, we went through uh, uh, with, uh, with the experts uh, uh, many, many statistical data reports of teacher education, ministry papers, and so on. And we tried to uh, review uh, the, 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 the ideas that we thought that we could, could like uh, use 
to give uh, some something more like something some something extra and 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 also we thought that it, it would be good to for them uh, to to get the idea about the, the our Finnish and, and Singapore system so that they, they can they can give information and, and and like comparison that what is something that that how they have done things and 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 how how they have succeeded because there are so many many uh, strong uh, uh, educational uh, traditions for example in 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 both countries and of course the surroundings are different Sri Lanka uh, being a, a group of of, of small uh, islands or, or bigger or small islands and Uzbekistan of course uh, having a, a long in in, in Start in case. Uh, if I start with the Uzbekistan uh, field study first, uh, we found out that there might be a need uh, to to change the concept of learning uh, in teacher education. We have very strong tradition that teachers need to know everything about the subject and which is really good but it's not all teachers also need to have skills uh, of teaching uh, how how they they make people how they make their students learn so uh, not only believing in in, in subject based knowledge but also about teachers knowing how to teach and having a strong pedagogical uh, skills. That's something that might be uh, or, or maybe could be considered in, in Uzbekistan teacher education. And then uh, mentoring novice teachers. Uh, there was like um, some um, uh, research done about how young teachers and uh, in their early career had difficulties of, of with their work for example or or other issues and and they they were treated treated not fairly for example in, in their in their working places so that's something that that should be focused uh, how to give these uh, novice teachers a good start uh, in their work because support is needed. It's a, it's a worldwide uh, issue about uh, supporting uh, a novice teachers is something that, that needs to be done. The profession has changed a lot. Uh, children are, are behaving differently. And of course, the, the way that we see rules, how we see things around us has changed and how parents, for example, are involved in schooling. So and teachers uh, profession is very challenging. It's very demanding. And that's something that they need support from early on. We found out that there's a mandatory in-service training system uh, in, in Uzbekistan, but it might need some reform because uh, the teachers, uh, some teachers felt that they were not giving the kind of in-service training that they needed, but they were given in-service training. So like getting the focus on needs of, of individual teachers is something that, that might be uh, important to, to consider if, if some changes uh, are made. Uh, there's, uh, there were numbers that uh, the, the, that the population of Uzbekistan is growing, especially the, there will be more children in, in, in coming years than there were before. So the infrastructure, the schools, uh, how many children there will be in one classroom, for example, that's an issue that, 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 that should be um, considered. Whether the infra infrastructure, the, the school buildings, uh, the classroom size and some, that's something that, that will will change uh, rapidly and uh, need, needs to be uh, some plans how these uh, children will be uh, educated in, in, in near, near future. Mm. Then um, there was a, 
development of uh, teacher professional standards, which are widely used uh, in many countries. The, uh, uh, looking at the teacher standards and making them work the best of the teacher and best of the system is, is, is important. Looking whether the, the standards really are something that, that help teachers to do, do their work better. Uh, and uh, on the other side, will not uh, like uh, make teachers uh, um, work for something that is not profiting their learners. Because I'd like to see the education systems working for the learners, for working for the children. And, and the children are the main characters. And everything that, that happens in the system should profit the, the learner and the child. So also, if, te if teacher professional standards are built so that, that they help the teachers to become better teachers uh, and not focusing too much on, on, on pay or, uh, or, 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 and, or um, that, that would make teachers do things that would only benefit them personally, not the system. And then uh, the, the sixth uh, like conclusion that teachers in service institutions should, should expand their role and uh, like uh, be more open for pedagogical innovations to give them uh, strength, to give them uh, motivation to, to, to develop their own system in their own surroundings, in their own, own culture to become even better. The next slide, uh, uh, some conclusions from the Sri Lanka field study. And I have to underline here that these were just like some, some uh, points that, that uh, we chose to, to, uh, to, to uh, present you here. Uh, there were many, many more uh, in the report as well. But Sri Lanka, um, the importance of, to develop and implement a comprehensive national policy on teacher education uh, is something that uh, came up. Um, we, we got the message from the local experts that, that this, um, these uh, different um, opinions and not one uh, uh, comprehensive policy that, that they could start uh, working with. And, and that's probably um, something that needs to be done before anything can, can, can go further, because uh, of course, educational policy is something that, that all the resources and, and the, the future planning can, can lean on. If, if you don't have it, it's difficult to, to make plans. So that's a very, uh, like uh, something that needs to, to happen as long as possible, the experts and the ministry and, and the whole system can, can uh, go on. Also, the, the question of ICT and online technology came up. Uh, uh, the distance learning mode, for example, and uh, giving answers to, to today's world's uh, questions. We, we have to expect that all uh, everybody can use uh, at least mobile phones and, and have some certain ICT skills to, to, to work, to, to, fi to find a career and so on. And earlier the better. So also getting started with the ICT education um, in all schools and, and fairly equally in, in, in all schools. On, on the islands. Uh, strengthening professional development of teachers. Uh, there were many uh, institutions that educate teachers in Sri Lanka, and uh, we don't have uh, statistics whether they produce uh, similar teachers or, or teachers with uh, with uh, uh, similar competencies. So maybe 
there might, might be an issue that from one institution, the teachers have certain strengths and, and from another institution, they come with another strength that, that they work with. But giving a more professional uh, education, like, and finding like uh, one uh, way that Sri Lankan teachers uh, are, are at their best is something that maybe should be uh, kind of discussed. What, what are the strengths of Lakan teachers and, and whether they all should have? And then uh, last but not least, uh, administrators in education and how pedagogical leadership in teacher professional uh, uh, development is uh, discussed. Principals at schools, they have a very important role uh, as leaders of the school, uh, how they, they support their teachers, how they uh, work with uh, parents, how they work with the uh, resources of the school, for example. Uh, it's uh, the next step from the teacher's role, because many, many principals, of course, have a teacher background. So how to take the step to become a pedagogical leader. And then, we had then, like Yoko mentioned, probably we have these online trainings for, for both of these, these countries. And here you see the, the dates and the, the number of participants we had. Uh, the, the, both trainings were for three days and each day had a, a theme. The first day being global trends in teacher education reforms, where we, we, we told about the, the results from, from our uh, survey, uh, from our reports. And then the second day was, was uh, focused on national trends in teacher education. And we had the local experts, local ministry people. We had uh, uh, different stakeholders uh, giving like the insight what's going on uh, in both countries. And then the third day we looked for the, the chat is an opportunity and, and kind of like, um, gave uh, uh, and shared ideas uh, uh, of, with discussions uh, what can be done if uh, the situation uh, is something that they, they think it should be changed. Okay, thank you. This was my uh, short uh, intro, uh, introduction to our, to our project. Back to Jok. Thank you, Ria. Thank you. So I'd like to a bit uh, discuss about adjustments in the TIA activities before we go to recommendations. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? This, in this TIA, we had uh, the pleasure of having work processes and outputs which are benefiting from strong interlinkages. Um, and uh, therefore, in a way, the linear timeline, which was originally um, envisaged for the TA, couldn't really be possible um, when the in, in international literature review was being prepared. At the same time, there were also issues coming out from the field studies, which were useful for the literature review and vice versa. So these processes, studies in various levels, um, there were processes, interactions between them, and they, they, they fed into each other. So that was uh, something which was very enjoyable in this, in this TA, and therefore the final um, versions of these 
reports of these various studies were possible to finalize at the later stage in the year than, than originally envisaged. We have uh, eight output reports produced, excluding the final report. And uh, these eight reports includes also the training reports. And this final report, which has been drafted, it has been prepared, summarizes the key, uh, key aspects from all these other reports. Can we have the next slide, please? Yes, uh, Ria already mentioned about COVID. In both countries, or in all four countries, uh, Finland, Singapore, Sri Lanka, and Uzbekistan, COVID-19 situation, of course, caused a delay in field studies and uh, how to collect data. Eventually, it was possible mainly through interviews online and through questionnaires. There was not much possible to have meetings in the ministries of education. Um, some meetings were possible to collect reports in Uzbekistan and Sri Lanka, but uh, um, the, the, it was not ideal situation in terms of undertaking field studies. Uh, anyway, all the field studies for field studies were completed by the end of the original TA, and even the online training for Uzbekistan was uh, delivered before the completion of TA. It was just the Sri Lanka training was um, postponed and uh, th therefore the TA period had to be extended a bit. Next slide, please. These are recommendations for the DMCs, but uh, of, of course, indirectly um, for ADB also to be considered. And in the end, and I will also make one recommendation, direct recommendation for ADP arising from this study experience. Can we go for the first one, please? This may not be any surprise to anybody who are watching, but it was very clear in, uh, from both countries um, and perhaps more from Sri Lanka that there is a need to provide support, further, further support in policy planning and prioritizing aspects of teacher education reforms. And in pursuing the reforms in a more phased manner. This was especially um, this in my view in Sri Lanka, where at the same time, um, the government budget is been squeezed and there obviously are uh, more cuts to the education sector budget, how to prioritize when uh, resources are limited and including financial resources, how to how to face reform, teacher education reform, and and how to make it manageable over a longer period of time. So that's one recommendation which is still very valid um, and has been there for many years for many countries, but um, again during this kind of financial squeeze which is happening for for instance in sri lanka at the moment it becomes very much forefront um next slide please professional learning communities in is an important development area in this education this is very um, much advocated by both finnish and singaporean these education systems and it is, in our view, is something which should be further uh, studied and recommended in the context of TMCs. And this also linked uh, to, the, to the way how the use of ICT in education, teacher education, could, could and should evolve to, to support ongoing professional devel development. Next slide, please. And therefore, we talk about more of this ICT. There is, there has been a shift in also in countries like Sri Lanka and Uzbekistan, much to shift to home-based schooling, and that has also then increased the demand for the teachers' competencies in ICT-based teaching and learning. 
students tend to be more, more much more competent than actually than actually teachers and that has increased more the pressure for teachers to upgrade their skills and it is of course obviously true that uh, proper utilization of ICT for teaching and learning will be increasingly important also when this COVID pandemic phases out so one positive aspect of this COVID is that uh, obviously it has forced in many countries education systems teachers and pupils to uh, adopt adapt adopt and adapt ICT solutions for teaching and learning but anyway more understanding is needed on what kind of use uh, of ICT has an impact on student learning the more teachers have the evidence of this more the more likely they are going to use it and another uh, related factor is the use of teachers digital digital competency the more highly teachers rate their digital competency, the more, the more they will use ICT. So these competencies in the future, any re reforms, they should be quite very high, highly rated targets. Next slide, please. Teaching practic practicums are very much integral, integral part of teacher education in many many countries and also in these four countries which were uh, participating in this ta study but they seem to be need to, to further um have a look in a more closer look on on what kind of structures these practic practicums follow in the various countries how they take place how they combine, if they combine theory and practice, and how they are organized, who is guiding them, and whether these actors have been educated for this, those who are guiding, those who are involved, those who are leading these teaching practicum processes, what kind of competencies they may need. These are examples of ele elements we recommend to be studied in the range of countries and surely there will be a variation an interesting variation in many ways uh, in these aspects but if there is a way to standardize to a certain extent um, similar model for several countries that would be one way to to have a look look at this next slide please So this is a recommend like well, these previous recommendations were to the TMCs, but of course indirectly for ADP. This specific specific recommendation, next one is is ADP. Um, there is a lot going on in countries like Uzbekistan, Sri Lanka, and many other DMCs, a lot going on in teachers in service training and continuous continual professional development that kind of areas lot of support from development partners other than adp one area which we feel where adp can have a niche is pre-service teacher education um, and modernizing and bringing more modern, modern elements into it um, and various kind of new work processes um that is something which is not necessarily happening in many countries in in such a way a focused way in many projects of adp and others the teacher education projects obviously the, the scope can in, can include and includes all pre-service and in-service but when the project is such large, it having such a large scope, then perhaps it's not possible always to tr drill and go to that level in the practical level in, for instance, in pre-service teacher education reform, um, which could be possible with the separate project which just focuses on pre-service teacher education. We can discuss this as, as well. So this is um, um, our presentation and. Uh, uh, we invite uh, uh, 
discussion and questions. I'm happy to clarify and expand further. Thank you. Yoko, if no one else has a question so far, I could I could start with one uh, because you were talking about this teacher uh, communities like learning communities. So so could you elaborate a bit more on that? Like how would they be working? I guess it's mainly related to the teacher in service uh, uh, training. But uh, how 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 are they like working in Singapore and Finland? Any any more information about that? Uh, I also see Chikang made a question in, in the chat so you can also answer that later but yeah maybe if you can tell a bit more about your observations about the digital learning communities thanks yes uh if it's okay i i'd like to tell more about that so um when we discussed uh what happens in finnish and singaporean schools we found out that uh, teamwork is the the something that all teachers are expected to do nowadays, both in Finland and in Singapore. Uh, teachers need to be uh, communic communicate with, uh, with, uh, with each other. They, for example, need to plan a teaching together. They, they uh, have to have skills to, to work well with, with parents, uh, with uh, maybe multi-professional uh, staff that they have about uh, from healthcare, for example, or from a social care. There are many people, many professionals working in, in, in schools in both in Singapore and Finland. And uh, there is a, uh, this term called professional learning community. And it's, uh, it's uh, like um, <laughs> professionals working together. For example, in Finland, they might have a teams that like for assessment and, and there are different uh, teachers from different uh, um, grade levels and, and they, for example, make the assessment plan for, for the school or there might be team working for for for, of course, uh, the, uh, Christmas uh, or, or other celebrations uh, and uh, teams working for for sustainable uh, environmental agenda 2030 goals for example and so on and so teachers work is not only teaching the class but it has become more of, of work for the whole community the whole school community and and these teams are organized of course by the the, the principal for example but also that the, the teachers uh, have a chance to to choose according to their strengths or their skills in which teams they want to work in both in, in Finland and, and Singapore. Uh, that was briefly maybe about that. Uh, and, and something that I'd like to add also about uh, what's going on in Finnish teacher education at the moment is, is that uh, especially in University of Helsinki is, is now uh, really highlighting the communications skills uh, of, of teacher students. They talk about this educational communication uh, because um, parents, other teachers uh, to be able to work in these communities better, uh, but also like social media is something that, that teachers have to have to have uh, skills to, to, to both uh, like uh, communicate and also like uh, re give response to, 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 to different uh, influence that comes from from outside school i hope i answered your your question you can and i cannot see the chat at the moment but what was the question there thanks Ria. Um, yes i'm I, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this uh Chisan lee has uh, uh put some questions there Chisan, would you like to uh, say verbally these questions Come on screen and explain these questions to us. Okay, thank you, uh, Joko and uh, Ria. So I will just read my question. Uh, I have three questions. Uh, first is, 
do you see good examples of uh, monitoring and evaluation systems in the countries you study? They, so the system will you measure and monitor uh, the quality of teaching. I ask this question because uh, it's kind of a no consensus on how to measure the quality of teaching. So I don't know whether you see any good examples. Uh, maybe you can answer this question. I can ask others later. Otherwise, you may forget my questions. Yes, uh, if I if I start, uh, that's a, a very good question. And I don't know if, you, if it's a, uh, a trick question, because uh, those who know Finnish uh, uh, teaching system, though that uh, Finnish teachers have a very wide uh, autonomy in, in their work. And and they can they can we have the national core curriculum, but the teachers who implement it they can choose for example the working methods and the learning materials that they want to use. Um, we also don't have uh, any monitoring system. Uh, but we use the uh, annual uh, quest. Uh, classes with the principal, but those are not compulsory. Uh, the teacher, the, the principal or the, the leader of the school can choose how they uh, uh, work with teachers. So, uh, but in Singapore, they, they had a, a very um, different system from ours. So they had, uh, they also, they have this monitoring uh, system and, 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 and assessment system of teachers, but unfortunately, I I don't know the details so well that I I, I feel that I could uh, explain it uh, here. Mm. Sure. Should I answer that? Should I ask the second question or? Sure, yes, sure. Yes, please. Okay. My second question is, uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, the virtual modality of training teachers now has becoming very popular now, uh, but the uh, I'm still not sure what how effective is it. Uh, so I don't know from your studies, uh, what's your assessment? How effective is the virtual modality for regular in-service teacher training? Uh, can, can you uh, a bit uh, define this virtual modality? Uh, so uh, that meaning we, that in the traditional teacher training, teachers will come to one place, like a classroom setting, and then mm -hmm. some people will teach, right? In, mm -hmm. in the virtual yeah. modality, they don't need to gather in one place. They can join in some uh, like a platform to uh, mm -hmm. to participate in the training. So yeah. that, that's what I mean, uh, virtual. Yeah, okay, okay, good. Uh, I think we all know that uh, during past two years, we have experienced a lot of uh, this uh, virtual modality uh, in-service training, like the one that we are doing at the moment. We don't have any research yet how it has worked. Um, I've been uh, doing training with teachers uh, during these two years. I think first it was good. It, it, and then they said that they even learned better because they had the, the time and, and, and they could actually make all the lectures because, because it didn't matter whether you were uh, uh, present or you could be anywhere. Uh, uh, but but you, you, you were online and, and therefore you had like more flexibility in, in, in your schedules and in your timetables. But uh, I think very soon we will get some research about how it has worked, for, especially with students, because I think what we first done, we were probably research the students, uh, the, the high school students, for example, uh, first. And I think uh, the first uh, results that we have, uh, from, for, for example, from Finnish health surveys, uh, is something that it, they are more passive and they are not learning so well. But we have to also know that that we all diff people learn differently, and and this has worked for some some students, and 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 this is uh, not working for others. But I think this has come to stay, and 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 uh, for, we have to make uh, the mixture of 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 these communication skills, for example, or or or, or something that that like that. We have to. Uh, study when we are in, in a group, in a real life group, but there are things that can be done uh, online as well. And I think 
uh, which which has been also the uh, the way that we have worked in Finland during this pandemic that smaller the children are they will be present uh, at schools so primary school children have mostly been present at school during this pandemic because we think that that they are the ones who need to be uh, attended uh, this at, at schools and and older you get uh, we expect them to online yeah thank you so much Ria. sorry i'm taking most of the time <laughs> I, I hope i well, don't crowd out other questions but the, my last question is uh, uh, so one major uh, challenge i think uh, in many uh, dmcs uh, for the teachers uh, there's a lack of incentive uh, to join the training uh, and the more challenging is that after their training, there's no incentive for them to utilize what they learn in the training after they come back to the schools. So uh, if you recommend, if you don't recommend the mandatory training, what would be the effective uh, financial and non-financial incentive for teachers to participate in training and utilize what they learn based on what you observed? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think I, if I could start, I think we are kind of like uh, we expected uh, training to be mandatory, but I think the point is that what is learned or, or how is learned. Yo, can you talk about the finance uh, aspect a bit more? Um, there is pretty sure uh, consistent evidence worldwide that, that if teachers are provided um, in, in service training, the type in the service training that the teachers feel they need. And they also, and also environment in their schools, going back to schools is so um, improved that they can use their skills, new skills or the upgraded skills the proper way teachers are not necessarily seeking for financial incentives so much. They are, as a professional group, there's a lot of solid research worldwide. There are quite consistent results on this regard. The teachers appreciate the professional support and also appreciate that arrangements are made for them to utilize the new skills or upgraded skills. They are not necessarily looking for uh, uh, financial incentives in, in this context. Of course, a teacher needs to have a proper salary, meaning that they can, they can get by without looking for a second or third job. But this is a very, very clear uh, overall, overall uh, trend, what I mentioned. Mm. Now, uh, um, Anything else? Thank, on thank this? you so much. Thank you so much, Yoko and Ria. And uh, back to, uh, uh, I think uh, I see some hands from Lynette. Yeah, maybe over to Lynette. Um, I think next next is uh, Eske Tachima. Eske's turn first. He was. Uh, thank you, Yoko. Uh, it was good to see you on the screen. And then I had an opportunity to make some comments on your inception report and also the big stand report. It was very, very prepared. And then we took the, your recommendation into our project design of uh, Uzbekistan secondary education project. Actually, my question was also related to these incentives for inside teacher training. But not only inside teacher training, the quality of teaching is really linked with the teacher management of the government. And uh, you know, this uh, not only the financial incentives, but uh, you know, pension and uh, you know, their professional career development, we tried to introduce some innovative way in the Uzbekistan secondary education sector. Could you share any innovative approach linking with the teacher management and teacher, you know, quality of teacher training in Finland or Singapore? It would be very much appreciated. Singapore, maybe. Well, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, um, this is something that um, I've been thinking uh, a lot lately about uh, 
I've been saying quite many times that the teacher's work has changed and the environment that they work in has changed in many countries. Of course, in, in some countries it has remained the same. But when we th think about teacher education and we have to think about the balance between the substance, uh, su uh, the, the, how, how know, the, know, know the, 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 the content of the, the substance that they are, they are a subject that they are teaching and what is the, the, the balance of the, the pedagogical skills. And I've come to this um, conclusion that we should go towards something that we, we first recruit the teacher students uh, in the education, and then we would have like the universal uh, pedagogical studies. And after that, we would find uh, who would go where. What is the path of a teacher? Teacher further from the pedagogical skills have become and and how to teach, how to make people learn, have become more important nowadays. We have a very uh, the background of the, the the students has has widened in Finland and I think in all over the countries. The languages used in classroom uh, has has multiplied, uh, so. With, with, with first, I would focus on, 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 on pedagogical skills and then to subject. But I think subject is, of course, important if we want, want highly skilled students. But still, uh, I, I think that would be like the innovation that, that many countries that have, uh, have limited, uh, limited uh, resources uh, and they want some quality to their teacher education is something that can be can be considered. Yoko, can you think of any other innovations? Because the Singapore system has, they are very innovative, but like I said, I, I'm think not that an was, expert. Uh, yeah. I think that was a quite a good uh, response already. Um, and uh, as we uh, recommended in, uh, in our recommendation, that I think this is very area where more should be done. What are the very latest think innovative thinkings? We know we know thinking we know what the innovations have been in the past in teacher education, but especially now when COVID it has been there, so it gives a pressure and opportunity to think more out of the box, um, and and continue to do that even after COVID is has gone. Um, so. Um, like in Sri Lanka, they have, uh, in terms of IT use, they have made certain kind of, I'm not, I wouldn't say it's innovative, but they have made certain kind of um, creative uh, uh, ways of arranging it um, with the students and uh, teachers. Um, it is, was forced by the fact that the COVID is there. They had to really find, find ways of doing it. But given this, I would say maybe I should have added to the recommendation more, more clearly that the, this part of innovative ways of uh, developing teacher education and teaching uh, that obviously should be having, having a new round of uh, analysis and uh, studies in that area, given the world is changing and increasingly education will be partly online with ICT help and partly classroom. So the setup is changing more than, more than it used to be in the past. Uh, are there any? Thank you, Jörg Nice Please to see you. Raise your hand. Mm. Come again. I think my colleague Lynette raised her hand. Lynette, are you there? Yeah, Lynette's yes. hand, hand. Please go ahead, Lynette. Okay, thank you so much for the presentation. I, I just wanted to ask two questions. So the first one, I noted in one of your slides that you mentioned that uh, the focus uh, should be on learning skills instead of subject content. Um, and that should be up updating the teacher education in terms of that focus. I wonder whether, uh, I, I wanted to see clarification on what you really meant. Um, are you um, looking at it for, from the perspective of, you know, not just improving pedagogy 
or improving subject matter content, but more on uh, improving pedagogical content knowledge, number one, and also technological pedagogical content knowledge. Because PCK, um, it's, it's now really something that is the focus in many countries. So it's really a type of knowledge where in the teacher packages everything he or she knows and understands like um, the subject matter, pedagogical methods, the learner, which is really important because adapting your pedagogy uh, and, and the subject matter content to the learner and the context to help the students learn and learn well. So, so that's really, you know, more important than just knowing separately pedagogy and also the subject matter. Uh, is, is that what you meant? And then also for the te te technological pedagogical content knowledge, which is really integrating uh, technology in teaching. And I, I noted that in your slides, you did mention this, but is, are these two concepts, you know, uh, really fully integrated in the teacher education programs in Singapore or Finland or in the two other countries that you, you covered uh, in your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think it wasn't a recommendation. It was like one of the conclusions from the, the international literature view because that, that issue that you just mentioned have came up in, in many, many uh, papers. But the, I think, um, uh, I, I, I have to, of course, I have the Finnish uh, teacher education background and um, we had great discussions when we were uh, talking about the Singaporean and Finnish system, both being good systems and both producing uh, good teachers. And this, I think, is very, uh, that was very, <laughs> the same thing that came up in our discussions because then uh, I was asked, uh, what is the, 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 what is the psychological background in your uh, learning concept in Finnish teachers? And there was me there, there was this called Katie Lane uh, from the housing as well. And, and, and we were kind of confused because we, we don't think like that in Finnish uh, teacher education. We, uh, I think we are very, um, um, happy to 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 like have this very uh, wide uh, pedagogical knowledge uh, about learning and 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 about teaching and I think it's very unique because even that we study in in our teacher education different like uh, uh, psychological uh, constructive or or, or, or uh, uh, behaviors and and all kind of this then the, the, the idea is the the uh, we, that teachers themselves are the 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 the, the producers of their learning uh, 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 we talk about teachers practical theology education so that uh, when, Teachers, students, they they study these, but then they start writing their own like uh, teacher um, uh, practical theories, saying that as a teacher, this is how I how I work, and this this is how I see this uh, learning and and teaching. So uh, when when we we talked about this uh, separating kind of the, the the pedagogical skills and and and. Uh, subject uh, knowledge, we have to go further. We have to start uh, thinking. We, we can't say that it would work for all systems, but it would have this very uh, uh, long discussions about what is the, the concept of learning that we have to, to get started in our way of, of teaching uh, uh, teachers, for example. Um, It's complicated, uh, and we when found out, for example, in Singapore, they have totally different way of, of, of seeing this this like that, and like I said, in 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 in, in subject uh, uh, content and and in certain like STEM subjects, it's important to have certain didactics. We talk about this didactics when we talk about the the 
uh, the skill of of teaching certain subject. We talk about like like uh, chemistry didactics or 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 language didactics and so on. So we we should bring the the, the concept of didactics in the discussion before we can like separate only the learning and teaching skills and and subject skill content. I, I think that would be uh, uh, we should have a whole seminar about this and yeah. <laughs> think about what is because it it's not that simple. I wish it was. I we could have one slide saying that, but but to start the discussion about. Uh, how you want to to build your teacher education, and I think it's, a, it's something that needs to be considered. Yes, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, indeed, that's that's really you know a concern because there's a tendency for in service you know pro teacher education programs to just focus on one or the other, so either just mm, subject mm. matter or pedagogy. So, and mm. not really focusing on the holistic picture of, mm. you know, uh, teacher education and how to deliver, you know, a concept uh, to a learner who's slow in, you know, science or math mm. you know, and make it very interesting. So, it's, it's really a major issue and, and mm. something that we'd really like to, you know, focus on in our mm -hmm. projects um, because it's really a major concern so for for some of our countries for example in southeast asia so so that's something that we you know perhaps if you organize this seminar it will be good to invite <laughs> clients also yeah. because it's it's a major debate it's a major well, debate. um thank yeah. you for your question i think that is you are in you are you are right there where we uh where we're in in our our team uh, discussing this <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. Um, my, my second question, if I may ask, um, it's really building on what um, Shigang and um, Aisuke mentioned earlier. And it's really, you know, um, incentivizing. And at the start, so how do you attract qualified teacher candidates into the teaching profession, number one? And how do you attract, you know, uh, the, I mean, incentivize them to stay on in 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 the teacher education profession and one of the things that you know even cambodia and philippines for example did was to develop a, a very extensive teacher career pathway you know to mm -hmm. incentivize these applicants to look at the teaching profession in such a way that they can see that they have a career you know, mm -hmm. and wh where they are already in the system mm -hmm. that, you know, they can progress uh, to become master teachers, for example, which are getting so much higher salary than lawyers or, you know, um, or even doctors for, for some countries. So I think it's, it's really important to, you know, develop this teacher career pathway, but it can also be very rigorous and extensive and, and very protracted, but I think it's worth it. And so it would be good to see whether Singapore or Finland or other countries also develop a similar career pathway for teachers and how they, how they are implementing it and what are the experiences so far in terms of mm. implementing these teacher career pathway programs. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, I, I briefly say that in Finland, it's still an attractive uh, profession and we have more applicants to our pro programs than we can, can take. In. But oh, wow. I think it would be important to, 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 to uh, make the education very attractive, uh, to, to show uh, that, that there are many chances, uh, many, many kind of people are needed to become teachers. And of course, money and the salary will be important uh, yeah. during the, the career. But but uh, like we have the master's program for, for for classroom teachers and even even for for early education teachers, the the, the education being being uh, like uh, attractive, giving many skills, um, uh, and these people who usually apply to become classroom teachers or early education teachers, they have they have multiple skills. Usually, they are they they don't, they haven't really decided how how do they use their their their, their skills. So, to have to get a university degree uh, and being as you are is at least uh, something that uh, that I found uh, 
out that many many teacher students had chosen the teaching because mm. of that. I had, yes. had a chance to to work in the University of Helsinki teacher training school uh, eight years, and I, I was uh, uh, helping the the teacher students to in their practicums, um, and, and we had a lot, lot of discussions about that how, when they were building their their teacher uh, teachers uh, practical theory and and that's how they reflect how how they became teachers how why they chose it and and, and it's a path i see okay thank you so much you're, yeah you're welcome Yoko, do you have anything to to, to add I, on, on that yeah i'd like to add to this Lynette's second question um in former Soviet countries, you know, talking about uh, Central Asian DMCs, um, in their teacher education system, there are certain uh, remnants from uh, old system, like in uh, Uzbekistan, they have uh, various levels of teachers, how they, they can progress in their careers to the master teacher, even there is one higher one, higher level of uh, four or five uh, different levels. and. And when they progress in those, they become increasingly involved in terms of uh, uh, being teacher educators and in-service training providers. Um, so that kind of legacy there, which has remained, is one of the good legacies from the old system, uh, which they have kept. On the other hand there, um, your question, how to ensure to get good teachers in the teaching force in the first place, that is, of course, uh, very important and difficult to have a one, one clear answer to that. But in the case of Uzbekistan, they need to, in the coming years, they need to increase the intake of, of new teachers quite drastically because the uh, population growth um, is there and um, how to increase it. And at the same time, even get better teacher candidates in than they have at the moment. So that's something one Uzbekistan is uh, thinking about and would need help uh, in terms of advice and help how to how to establish that system in such a way that uh, they can attract better candidates at the same time also increase the intake quite drastically. Thank you. Thank you, Yuko. Actually, one of the problems is not just, you know, attracting the good candidates, but also attracting the candidates uh, to teach in the, the difficult subjects, you know, uh, mm -hmm. especially yeah. at the yeah. secondary level, like STEM, yeah. Yeah. STEM secondary yeah. education, it, there's a exactly. major issue in terms of shortage of teachers. So even if they're interested in, you know, uh, enrolling uh, in teacher education institutions, usually it's in the social sciences. So, mm. uh, so there's a dearth of STEM teachers in at the secondary mm. level. So, so that's the major challenge, right that, now. That it, that is the major challenge, and partly in some countries, uh, that challenge is caused by the fact that uh, there there is industry areas, other yeah. other areas of uh, economy in the in the society which are headhunting. Uh, Right, graduates, university graduates who have mathematics, science background. That's true. That's true. And and this is difficult for us to kind of tackle that uh, trend. But that that is one of the trends which is undermining the, the yeah. way of getting proper teachers for STEM subjects in in, in schools. That's true. Yeah. yeah. yeah especially it, because these jobs are more high paying than you know yeah. teaching so <laughs> yes yeah. but it also takes takes many years like i think the the excitement of science needs to get started early on so yeah. so that would take years to have those early early scientists to become professionals mm -hmm. so now you if there has been a lack of this uh, good good quality science teaching for 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 some years it takes time before to get get the next generation from out of the, the, the school yeah thank you so much also, yeah and one one more thing uh, i think attending oh. like uh, more to to girls because uh, the, mm. those i think there there would be lots of potential in in in, in science oriented girls also that like uh, like uh, mm -hmm. many of those uh, those professors are still like mostly male uh, yeah. 
That's true. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Please be free, free to. Or comments also. Comments, comments. I don't see any more questions in the chat box. No. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay is saying these are great questions. I'm listening to responses with interest. Thank you. Yes, Yuka, do you have any, any comments or questions that? Not at this point. I, I think uh, we can give the floor to protest. Yes. Okay. No more questions. Since there are no Thank more you. questions, we, we will invite Prashes to um, uh, say closing words for this session. And uh, on my behalf and on behalf of the whole TA team, thank you for this opportunity to share briefly our outputs. And, uh, and then the final report will be there available for everybody to have a look. Thank you. Yeah, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. It is a great pleasure to join this important webinar, which has huge implications on improving foundational learning and helping our DMCs to achieve, to, uh, in achieving universal secondary education. Let me thank the Finnish Consulting Group for sharing the findings from the teacher quality study. These are highly relevant and timely. Based on my uh, experience and the reforms I've seen over the past two decades in teacher quality improvement, I usually have three questions to inform reforms. These also resonate well with the questions raised today in our discussions. First, how can countries attract more qualified and motivated teachers into teaching and develop them into world-class instructors? Here, the implication is not just about improving teacher professional development, but also getting the right people to teach as this has been the main focus of successful countries. Second, what is the right balance between pre-service and in-service training? I have seen too much emphasis on in-service training and not enough on pre-service training. In the long term, getting the right people to teaching profession and having a good pre-service training will establish a good foundation for institutionalizing effective teachers. In that scenario, the role of in-service training will be quite different and related to upskilling and uh, uh, remaining current with latest developments and practices to continue improvements. Third, effective teaching is critical, but for teachers to be effective, what are the other critical factors to enable them to target lagging students to ensure learning for all and no one is left behind? In uh, many countries, data on assessment is still missing. Teachers have to deal with loaded curriculum and continuous formative assessment is either missing or inadequate. Against this backdrop, teachers need complementary support to get the data to simplify the curriculum and to make the system more responsive to learning needs and of diverse learners. I'm glad that today's presentation and discussions revolve around the three questions to take a more holistic and ecosystem approach to improving teaching and learning. Finland is also a good example in two important areas. One is about the constant effort to reform and innovate despite having a great system, for example, the phenomenal learning or integrated learning approach. And the other is about how Finland is able to perform so well with less homework, less learning hours, and less testing compared to other successful countries like Korea and Singapore. Given that the pandemic has exacerbated learning and inequity, we need to learn from countries like Finland and Singapore, but also from developing countries like Sri Lanka and Uzbekistan on how teacher quality needs to be contextualized. We need to explore more about teacher, teacher, teacher learning, teaching uh, uh, learning communities to promote excellence in pedagogical practices. Going forward, we need to take a more holistic approach, combining short-term and long-term approaches to improving teacher quality, including teacher recruitment, teacher professional de development, both pre-service and in-service. 
and teacher support as a major component of the education ecosystem. Also, it, is, it will be important to prioritize quality of spending amidst cut in educational budget. The role of universities and private sector is one area that needs to be prioritized in ADB funded pro project, particularly in uh, pre-service training as pointed out, uh, uh, including uh, digital learning as part of that. We look forward to the final report. Let me also thank everyone for attending and for your contributions in enriching the discussion. Thank you very much. Back to you, Yuka and uh, Yuko. Yes, thank you, Brachesh. Yoga, you want to have final, final remarks still? Or. Yes, thank you very much also from my side and uh, from Ria's side and uh, from the whole team. Um, this has been very interesting TA project for us to work on. And as uh, always, what always makes it good is that uh, we, we learn ourselves also something new every time. So in this regard, it's been again, something uh, enjoyable activity. Thank you very much. And thanks for this opportunity to share this these outcomes of the TA, and uh, we look forward to uh, producing, submitting the final report and uh, helping in any other ways uh, in teacher education reform aspects in the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. So you. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.